girl is like a sexy girl with a boyish edge. You know, I always feel like, you know, my customer just has, she's not the girly girl. It's amazing how they change the models of the season. I know Cal from last season. I do like the color palette. She's actually, I've seen a lot of black this season, and I know she has a lot of black in her show, but there's like little touches of color. So we're backstage with Nicole Miller and first of all I want to say thank you for my Fashion Week outfits because it's all Nicole Miller. Oh great. Okay. Well thanks for wearing them. That's a great color on you by the way. I started out um, looking at conceptual and minimalist art in the beginning of that and I um, particularly like Solowit. <laughs> sort of like Solowit meets glam rock. A tip for somebody who wants to become a designer? Yeah, like maybe learn how to sing. <laughs> Happy Valentine's, everyone. Definitely the best breakfast we've had yet um, backstage at a show. Thank you, Carolina Herrera. I'm going to enjoy this and I'm excited to see your show. been doing this for about seven years now. I've been living in New York for seven years and um, yeah, I've been having fun. I actually, I, I was away for like two or three seasons. I did way too many, so now I'm just taking it easy and doing a couple of shows in New York. We're going for a very sleek and kind of simple looking updo, but it's not simple to do. And in the front, it's going to have a side part and it's going to come down and look a little boyish. Then we take these two side panels, put them in a ponytail in the back, and then we lift all the hair up and tuck it in to the ponytail. First, we're uh, blow drying the hair with the styling cream. And if the girls have a little bit of, dry, uh, of dryness, in their hair we're putting a little bit of the Moroccan oil treatment and then we're finishing it off with the hairspray this one it's great because it gives great shine and it gives great manageability you can brush it out pretty easily and, um, and plus it helps us to, to hold everything up How do you get enough sleep and enough food and rest and everything? You just don't. I'm here with Sharon Gall with Makeup Forever and we're backstage with Monarchy. Makeup Forever, um is a very makeup artist friendly makeup. It's, um, we're using HD foundation, which is really friendly. I can see in your camera it's HD. <laughs> so and HD that's actually fairly new, right? The HD makeup? Um, yes, HD is like really something that's going in the future. And you can pick up HD foundations at Sephora. 
so that we can use it at home and it's not just for makeup artists. And what's the look that you're creating today? And what I'm doing is a Saint Tropez basic, like it's a really natural basic makeup, which is just nice and round tones and just soft and approachable. That it's like a Saint Tropez tan, you know, so you just nice healthy glow. Yeah, just nice, simple, approachable makeup that it's just sexy. That you know, browns and golds and just natural makeup like Bridget Bardot. And can you actually be a little, um, a little more specific as to what colors you're using? Palette right here. It's an amazing palette. We use a lot of this palette, like the browns and the gold. This is my favorite palette because you can just, you don't have to be a makeup artist to use something like this. So you're using browns on the on the face, and then what are you using on the lips? What color? Um, this one is a, it's, a, it's a natural color. I mean, they're like a number nine natural. Okay. So um, we're using number nine natural. So you have a, a lip liner on there and then a little gloss? Yeah. So taking the diamond powder right here, you see? Oh, wow. Now, is that diamond powder, is that only for the eyes, or can you use that anywhere else? It's for the eyes. We have diamond powder for the body, too. Isn't that beautiful? That is gorgeous. Hi, I'm Millie Simmons, and you're watching Chic.TV. We're talking with Millie. She's our Chic.TV model of the day, and we're outside of the Nicole Miller show, which you're walking in. Yeah. That's exciting. It's very exciting, yeah. It was my second show of the season, so yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Um, so yeah. So where are you from? I'm from London. So yeah, I live in London, and I came from the countryside. It's like two hours out of London. So um, yeah, it's wicked. Nice. And how long have you been modeling for? About eight months. So you're pretty new. Yeah, pretty new. This is my first season in New York, so I keep getting lost everywhere and everything, but it's awesome. I'm having the best time ever. It's amazing. Right. And now, is this your first visit to New York? Uh, my second. I came here when I was really young, but I can't I can't remember much. And You know, I'm like here on my own, and I'm getting around on my own, and seeing everything, doing castings every day, so. And now, how did you get into modeling? Uh, I got scouted. Um, by Jodie Furlong, who's my mother agent, he scouted me in London one summer and then signed me with my agency at Union in London. Um, so yeah, just one summer day, like I was, I was at this uh, my mum's friend's gallery thing and he was there. So got talking and then he was like, "You've got to be a model." <laughs> so what does your family think? Kind of, oh, I love it. They're so supportive. My mum was here last week with me. Um, she was working as well, but um, they, they get really excited and they want to hear all the news every day and everything. So yeah, they think it's cool. How old are you? 20. 20, okay, wow. So tell me some of the most exciting modeling jobs that you've done since you've started. Most exciting? Well, I haven't done anything really big yet because I've been doing it eight months, but you know, I've done some really cool editorials. I've done one in Switzerland um, in the summer. That was awesome. It was in like a trailer park. It was really like grungy and cool. Um, I'm coming here is actually one of the best experiences I've had so far because it's so far away from home, it's so different. And I've got some really cool shows that I've booked, so yeah. So exciting! Like, I've, I've just done um, Elle magazine in Tatlow and, and uh, catalogs and stuff in England. So, so what is your goal um, in modeling? Like, what is your big dream? Um, I want to be kind of well known in the industry and to, you know, do well and succeed and uh, be a good influence on other people and like, um, yeah, just do get some really awesome jobs and travel as much as I can and everything so. Okay, so what are some of the places that you've traveled to? Uh, I've only been uh, to New York now. Uh, I'm going to Milan next in two weeks and um, I'm going to Paris as well but I haven't, I've only been to London and I'm in Switzerland for that shoot so yeah it's all really new to me. <laughs> and do you have time for a boyfriend? I have a boyfriend he's in New York with me he's a model as well um, he's a select so and we're staying together so yeah we live together in London as well. Which is cool, so I do, yeah, because we're in the same kind of industry, it's easier, and we both understand each other, so. Well, it's great to have that understanding. Exactly, yeah, because it's a hard, it's hard industry to be in. And you're flying all, like, around all over the place and doing loads of stuff and parties and stuff, and we can go together because we've got like the same group of friends and, and contacts, so, yeah. How long have you guys been together? Uh, a year in March, I think, so, yeah. Is he walking in uh, Fashion Week at all? He is. He's doing a show today. He hasn't told me which one it is yet, but um, 
Yeah, he, he got here on like three days ago, so he's been doing castings and he's got his show now. And then, um, yeah, I think he's been an option for quite a few more, so yeah, it's really exciting for all of us. It's really cool. Lake in the Stars presentation. I'm talking to the designers, Man and Nikki, and tell me a little bit about the collection that we are seeing right now. Um, the collection, the idea behind it is a 1970s take on Italian neoclassicism. We looked a lot to the architectural firm from Italy from the 60s and 70s called Super Studio, and they talked a lot about form and function and material and anti-design. We have a new manufacturing partner, and so for this new collection we were able to manufacture, to develop some really new cutting edge technologies with them. And so we were thinking a lot about form and function and how design becomes a part of that. And so that's what we were trying to, to put forth. We're here with celebrity stylist Robert Fernay, and tell me, um, what do you think of the collection that we see here? I love it. I actually think that this is such a unique opportunity in New York City to show a collection like this because it's difficult to actually mount any collection, but to, to do a collection that's really t rooted in lingerie is even more difficult because I don't think people think of it as something that they need to see on bodies and on beauties and styled and in an expressive way. And I think it's great. I think the Lake and the Stars are genius. And I'm really happy that they won the Echo Damani Fashion Foundation Award this year. As we push further into the digital age, bloggers are becoming the big next thing. Instead of going to newspapers, people are going to these websites and they're becoming really popular. So we decided to catch up with some more popular bloggers to ask them about their blogs and get their takes on the trends for this season's Fashion Week. Sugar Laws started as a food blog, which is how it got the name Sugar Laws. Um, but since then, it sort of developed into this sort of whole lifestyle, living sweetly. Um, and yeah, it's definitely, my food followers, I think, were all girls in their 20s, not all, but a lot of girls in their 20s and 30s, and they all have style too, so they've definitely kind of come along with me on this crazy, crazy journey. <laughs> Swagger 360 was something that I wanted to, to put out to express not only fashion, but also style. Um, I thought that some of the blogs out at the time didn't necessarily focus on um, the style as much as they did the fashion. and. That thus came swagger. It was something behind just the fashion. It was that little extra something, and that's what I try to put you on the site. I mostly mostly so, um, socialize on like you know fashion, beauty, a little bit of travel, basically the life of a single girl like in the city. <laughs> okay, and how long have you been blogging? About five years. And what would you say your target audience is? Definitely um, single girls in their twenties and thirties. Definitely budget conscious girls. So you talk a lot about how to find great deals in the city and that kind of thing as well? Absolutely. Like from Fashion Week, we're looking for at the runway and trying to find the real way to use that versus the fashions that might be out of reach for a lot of girls. I've been blogging about, I guess, four years, something like that. But these two last years, it was like, it got popular. Not that much though, but I have my fans, my followers. <laughs> and why did you decide that you wanted to start a blog? I just don't know. I don't even remember when I when I started. It was maybe it was because of the movie. My favorite movie is The Virgin Suicides. I like the photography and everything, the colors that Sofia Coppola made up. So it started with that. I mean, I uploaded some stills from the movie, and then it kept like that. How long have you been blogging? Um, about three years, but I've done fashion for a year, and this is now my second fashion week, so it's really fun. Great. So can you tell us um, what you were doing in fashion before you were a blogger? Oh, I wasn't. I was. I mean, I was, you know, I think I had my own personal style, but I never, I never worked in fashion. I think that's why it's 
I mean, really, it's exciting for me, I think, in a way that, you know, it's not for everyone because I would never get to come here if it weren't for my blog. It would just never happen. And so I feel so lucky and so grateful, you know, to just be able to soak up all of the beautiful models, the clothes, the atmosphere, the people, everything. I try to blog actually five days a week, every weekday. Um, I think that that's what keeps my audience, uh, my uh, the people that follow the blog, coming back. It's no two, no gaps. Um, I, I've realized that if you throw in too many gaps in between, people lose interest. I blog on a good day probably like eight times. I have many, many blogs. Most of my blogs are beauty centric, but um, some are like fashion and um, budget. So basically, whenever I have a thought, <laughs> I blog it. It's almost like my blog is my best friend. Do you tweet and use Facebook at all with your blog? Of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm like addicted to Twitter this week. It's definitely, I mean, even for the shows that I'm not at, you know, I, I love hearing about them on Twitter. Um, and I definitely use Facebook too. Although Twitter is so immediate, I think it's, it's very addictive. I know you're really big on Twitter. <laughs> so let's talk about that. How important is Twitter and other social media platforms for your blog? Twitter has been amazing for me. It's opened up all kinds of new doors. I've gone to like the Emmys and the Miss America pageant just to tweet. And I think because a lot of people are very much in the now. They want to know what's happening right now. I get most of my news from Twitter. And so by following what's going on in my tweets, people can find out what's going on in a fashion show that's happening at the minute or an event that's happening at the minute. And it makes them feel like they're there, which makes them much more part of the action. People in a different country, whether it be Japan, Norway, wherever it is, people can actually have access to you. And with social media, I mean, that's just having somebody right down the street, right next door, basically. It's real quickly accessible. So that's that's key for any type of business. One of the things that I've been doing is whenever I get to interview designers, I'll ask my Twitter followers if they have any questions for designers. And people actually do, and it's, it's kind of great, because then, you know, they get their questions answered, and I don't have to come up with any questions. So <laughs> it works pretty well. And that's a great way to engage your followers, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And the designers are on Twitter, too. So it actually, it really kind of, I think, ends up being fun for everybody. I, uh, I love leather, and I don't actually follow trends. I just wear what, it's, it's very related to my mood, so it's like every day I see, whatever. Sometimes I, 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 I choose the wrong outfit. <laughs> I'm always cold, but it's okay. <laughs> really popular right now I think are the sheer women wearing sheer dresses, no matter how cold it is. You see the sheer and another layer under it. Every year when there's a trend, you could choose the big things from that season, let's say the color, like this year is going to be honeysuckle. and get a scarf, get a pair of shoes. You don't have to reinvent your entire wardrobe for the trend because it's going to change. Beyond that, I wear a lot of classics. I wear black, I wear things like the little black dress, knits, the things that are going to be big every single year. And that's the way of making your wardrobe stretch and shop in your own closet. Um, I think one of the key things about blogging is finding a niche. What's happening is that uh, when I started, I considered myself one of the old school, new school people. In other words, two years, anything from two years previously, I think is pretty much established. The newer blogs that have just come up, um, I think it's very important that they find niches. And that's the problem. I think somebody who's blogging about just everything isn't necessarily going to stay around too long. Um, there are too many blogs out there now. So you have to specialize in one area, decide what it is, be true to yourself, make sure it's something that you enjoy. and. With that, just stay focused on that one area. Keep with it is the advice that I give everyone. You would not believe how many people start blogs and then just abandon them. And I think, you know, once you sort of you put yourself, it's fun, but you know, there's some discipline involved too. And if you, you know, if you post a couple times a week for a year, you're doing pretty well. Just do it. I mean, it's something so personal that it's it's cool. It's something that it may relax you or, or some sort of therapy, or you know, it's cool. Just start writing. When I first started my first blog with a little alley toot on chinos and for the first probably year the only people who commented were my best friends and my mom. And I was like, this is ridiculous. I could just like go for coffee with them. And then slowly people started to like, you know, following me more and more. And now it blows my mind to think about the amount of people reading what I write every day. So just like keep at it and don't get discouraged. Can you imagine how long it took them to put all of this together? Wow. Six yeah. months <laughs> since last Probably. fashion week. Probably. <laughs> I love Pista Barcelona. <laughs>
and it's because we start with a palette of very clean colors, then working very strongly, very deeply each piece, we achieve a final, final language of sophistication and, and contemporaneity. That's why at the end it's not so clean. This a dress also with a fringes in wool and the angora pleats mixed with the legging in, in lace. This is beautiful. When you're designing, what is the type of woman that you have in mind? Well, it's a person that uh, understands fashion with uh, irony and also a person that has a young spirit and likes to express her individuality. We're backstage at the Nicole Miller Show and I have two girls that are walking in the show. And what's your name? Janiel. I am Leah. Your first fashion week? My first season was in February and this is my second season. Okay, and you? This is my first season. Yeah. And have you two modeled together before? I mean you're kind of hanging out backstage. How does it work with the models? I mean is there camaraderie? Uh, we just met but most of, we just met but you know models we do get along because we both we all go through the same stuff things over and over so. And you can relate. Yeah. And and do you find that overall most models are friendly? There's no, or do you find that there's competition? Uh, obviously, there is competition, and uh, most uh, there's many competitive models. But what's the meanest thing that anyone's ever done that you've seen? Uh, as I said, I haven't done like many shows, but <laughs> I uh, I can't come up with anything. What about you? Anything mean that you've seen? Or experience. You don't have to use names. It's okay. No, I guess people or models are people are just intimidated up with me. I don't know. Okay. They never tried anything. I don't know. You're like I look. You know, I give them a scary look and they run away. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and so, have you done um, any campaigns? I did a Benetton campaign. Uh, oh, how was that? It's pretty good. It's out now. all on an elephant or. Oh, I wish, oh my god, I wish I was, but no, I was like jumping up and down all smiley and stuff, you know, Benetton, but yeah, it's out now, it's in the stores, it's okay. on the buses, it's everywhere. Yeah. Wow. Where did you feel, where did you shoot that? Here in New York. Okay. And have you been able to travel a lot in modeling? Uh, I won the V Magazine competition uh, this summer, so. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. So, I haven't done any campaigns yet, but I've, uh, done some test shots and yeah. So tell me about the competition, what was that like? Did you enter yourself? Yeah, I entered myself and uh, uh, yeah, 6,400 other girls did and I And won. you were picked, just yeah. wow, what did you have to do? How did they choose you? Uh, I sent in photos, four photos and brought a little bit about myself and my height and everything. Did they make you do a runway walk? No, they didn't. <laughs> so they, they just picked you up your photos? Uh, uh, yeah, they picked up my photos and then uh, they contacted uh, my agency in Norway, like uh, that's my agency now, not before. And uh, they contacted them and they contacted me again for um, wanting me to do a video. And uh, they filmed me talking about myself and doing some poses. It's very <laughs> exciting. So now you're from Norway. Where are you from? Jamaica. And what do you guys like about New York? What do you like to do in your free time when you're not backstage and on the runway? Uh, I like to, uh, just chill, just chill at home, really, because I don't like New York weather. <laughs> oh, I know today's awful. Yeah, today's it's awful. freezing, absolutely freezing. And you, what do you like to do in New York? Uh, in New York, I ha I live in a mall apartment, so I live with a bunch of other girls, and so we go out after shows and jobs and. What do you do? You go dancing, bar, shopping? No. Too young for that. We <laughs> eat. How old are you? 15. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. How are you? <laughs> yeah. What's so. your What's your favorite restaurant? What do you like to eat? Uh, we was at this restaurant, Cafe Habana, or what's it called? Yeah. And that was really good. Yeah. So yeah, we like that. <laughs> All right. Um, and I have one more question for you. Now you said this is your second season um, at Fashion Week. 
What went through your head the very first time that you stepped on the runway at your first show? Uh, the first time, my New York show, my first time stepping on the runway. I don't know, I got like an adrenaline rush. I didn't even know that I came off the stage. I'm like, boom, boom, boom. So, but it was amazing. It was an amazing feeling. And I didn't like runway. Now I love runway, so it was a great feeling. talking with designer Chris Benz um, at your presentation and tell me a little bit about the inspiration for all these looks. The inspiration um, sort of stemmed from a lot of time that I've been um, spending in Savannah, Georgia and so it's all about that kind of southern charm mixed with like art school and everything that has to do with Savannah. I think he's so original and funny and I love the detail that he puts in things and um, you know he comes up with a different look all the time. It reminds me in a way of uh, Todd Oldham and some of the stuff that he was trying a lot of crafted things and um, I just love him as a person so I always want to be supportive. Are you from Savannah? No, but I've been going there as a mentor for SCAD, for Savannah College of Art and Design, um, over the past year or so. And I've just fallen in love with the city and it's sort of haunting beauty, so it's been great. Chris Benz is a dear old friend of mine, and um, you know, I saw this collection when he was just conceptualizing the whole Savannah witch situation. And um, I'm so proud of what he was able to make. And Chris, Chris, to me, is the highest level of American designer. What's one of your favorite looks? Um, I do love that. What's one of our um, prints is this, this great smoke print, um, which I feel like has a lot to do with, um, you know, Savannah and it's like spooky um, energy. you're designing clothes, what, who are you having in mind? What kind of woman? I mean, we always have sort of this carefree American woman in, you know, that like loves to layer and loves to, um, you know, sort of be a little bit carefree in how she dresses and not take herself too seriously. 